Hello and welcome to this week's edition of our Talk Sober Live Get Sober show. And today what we're going to do is we're going to be tackling a question that I see quite often in lots of different videos that you will find online. Uh, namely some videos from people that are looking at like mind over matter, law of attraction, positive thinking to get past alcohol. Now, personally, I don't think this is the right approach for some people, and we're going to talk about why in a minute. I just want to make sure that our audio is, in fact, working, um, and it looks like it is. So, cool. If you're watching and you want to say hi in the chat box, feel free to do so. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about these videos that uh, talk about positive thinking and mind over matter and, you know, just think your way out of addiction. And we can see this comes from a video response to a video entitled, Do You Think You're a Real Alcoholic or Just a Problem Drinker? And this guy is going on to talk about what a real alcoholic is, uh, if you qualify as a real alcoholic, what defines the real alcoholic? Is it just a habit? Is it something bigger? Uh, what's going on? Now, some of the things that he outlines in that video that we're going to talk about today that are going to help you stay sober are things like he says, okay, well, you know, there's this thing of mind over matter. Can you use your mind over this problem, which is the alcoholism? Can you think your way out of this? Another thing he says is that if you can believe you can achieve. Another thing he says is a quote from Nikos Kazin something, right? And he says, in order to succeed, we must first believe that we can. And all these things, they sound good and they pat us on the back and they make us all feely. But when I was in my drinking and I was in that uh, alcoholic spiral, that alcoholic hysteria, if you will, uh, I was really struggling with these things and no amount of positive thinking would have helped me. So these things might sound good, like Norman Vincent Peale, who is one of the kings of positive self-help, says, you know, if you believe in yourself and have faith in your abilities, that's, that's the key. And then William James has a lot of belief quotes. Roosevelt, one of our presidents, even said, if you believe you can, you're already halfway there. And then this video goes on to talk about how he controls his action by using his thoughts and how we're like magnets and like attracts like and uh, what we think we become and we attract what we think and how to use your thoughts and your feelings and everything like that. And he goes on to talk about what a real alcoholic is and, and how a lot of it is to do with the mindset, right? A lot of, you know, recovery stuff talks about get rid of the stinking thinking and, you know, think your way out of these things and stuff like that. And what I want to do is I want to talk to you today about what it really takes, because as you can tell from my bookshelf, I actually have a Norman Vincent Peale book right here. Uh, that one right there. It's kind of old. And then I have a lot of other positive thinking books, right? And you know, it's kind of funny because I, um, I have a business online, a pretty decent business. It does online work and things like that. And when I was a kid, I was always interested in making money and business and being successful and everything that this culture puts upon you uh, when you're young. You know, it's like, you got to have the stacks, you got to have the girls, you got to have this, got to have that. And I was mostly interested in creating a business. And so at the young age of like 14, I started ranking, uh, reading books like Think and Grow Rich and uh, different stuff like that. And, you know, it, it helped for some things. Positive thinking does help for some things, but I don't believe it helps for alcohol. And we're going to talk about why. So what I'd like to do right now is head over to the blackboard and talk to you about this stuff and talk to you about what it is that defines a real alcoholic, what it is that defines, and I think I forgot water. So if I get all crazy hopped up on coffee in this video, um, that's, that's the reason, right? I forgot to bring water in here. Maybe I'll take a break at some point and uh, get some water. But what we want to do is we want to talk about this because there's a lot of different schools of thought um, about this, right? So let's go ahead and write up here, real alcoholic. Now, this video, alcoholic, 
this video that I'm uh, referencing was from the alcohol mastery uh, stuff. And he was saying, you know, uh, the key is positive thinking. And I know I get a lot of people who say, well, you know, you're not a real alcoholic because you didn't go through things this certain way or you didn't go through things this certain way or whatever it is. And, you know, a lot of people talk to him about that. So what we want to do is we want to talk about what a real alcoholic is. Well, the definition of an alcoholic is someone who is continuing to drink despite negative consequences in their life, right? So if we look at the real alcoholic, and I hope you like my uh, little pictures that I put up there. I think I can make those show, right? The little pictures that I put up here of our guy who's just drinking and, you know, he forgot his pants and the guy who's an actual real alcoholic. And these are the things that we picture in our mind, right? We picture in our mind, okay, well, the real alcoholic is the guy in the gutter, right? The, the problem drinker, you know, he's just got a problem. He can quit whenever he wants. It's just getting a little out of hand, whatever. Now, I was in both of these dangerous categories because obviously one thing leads to another. One drink leads to another, and these things start to happen. And to get caught up on the semantics of what a re real alcoholic is, it's just a moot point, right? The fact of the matter is, is you're probably watching this video because you want some kind of help. You want some kind of, hey, how do I get out of this, right? And if you're continuing to drink despite negative consequences, right, are you continuing to do this? Because all the positive self-help, feel-good, law of attraction stuff says, well, you know, do the things that make you feel good and you're going to have a fulfilled life and you're going to feel better and you're going to have this and, and whatnot. And you might have these things. Uh, we'll put our guys up there, right? There's our guys. I forgot which screen I was looking at. And it says, you know, believe in yourself and believe in this stuff and do what works. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was drinking and I was in the grips of the alcohol spiral, the hysteria where I couldn't get out, right? That, that's the real definition to me is like, hey, this stuff is uh, causing negative consequences in your life and you can't stop. Because obviously, for all the negative consequences, if you list all the negative stuff, and I think I got to do it over here, right? You say like legal, legal stuff, uh, family, money, health, right? There's a lot of people that I have met who are alcoholics and they drink and their liver is like coming out of their belly and their doctor's like, dude, you need to stop, but they just don't stop. Okay. So mind over matter here. It's like, okay, well, either he doesn't want to really quit or whatever. So we're going to talk about what the reality of what's going on here. Now let's take a look at this stuff and let's take a look at what this really stems from and what is really going to help you, right? Because this video, despite whatever anyone thinks about what a real alcoholic is, how to get rid of this or whatever, the fact of the matter is, is this video is, is made to help you, right? I'm making this video for the people out there that say, you know, positive thinking is good. And I've tried positive thinking, but I can't stop drinking. I've tried positive thinking, but I can't get out of depression. I've tried positive thinking, but these things just aren't working for me, right? And we look at this and we say, well, what is the real thing? Now, a lot of people in life, they say, well, you know, just stop. I remember when I was drinking and my family said, just stop, right? Now, um, a lot of people say here, and I, I want to bring this up because you'll see our little mouse on the screen. Now, there was a study done with rats and mice and things like that. They do animal testing, which is kind of a bad thing, but we do learn a lot from it. So we might as well learn something from it uh, if they're going to be doing it anyway. And they did this test where this little rat would go along and he's eating his cheese, which rats care about cheese, right? That's what they like. They like to get the cheese. If you put the cheese at the end of a maze, they'll go down the maze and they'll get that cheese, right? Because they like it. They need to eat. They have this ingrained thing in their life is drive to eat, right? So do we as humans. Now, what it says here and what the test showed is that if they took that mouse or rat or whatever it was they used, and they made a little button that distributed alcohol or morphine or something like that to the rat, he would eventually, he pushed the button and he'd get the feeling. And over time, he'd keep pushing the button, he'd keep getting the feeling. And then over time, what happened is this rat who was so bent on getting the cheese is now sitting in the corner, pushing this button over and over and over again. Go over here and do it. Pushing the button over and over and over again to get this feeling. He forgets about his cheese. He forgets about his food. He forgets about his life. He forgets about everything. And the fact of the matter is, is here's this poor little rat. The thing's going to die because now his brain is like, I need to push this button so that I can feel good. All right. So now to go to that rat and say, well, you know, 
How about some cheese, buddy? How about some positive thinking? How about, you know, we just get a new outlook on life or whatever, right? The rat's going to be like, shut up. I'm here pushing the button. That's what I'm doing. Now, that's what positive thinking is like to the brain of an alcoholic, right? The brain of an alcoholic is in what I call alcoholic hysteria, right? You're little, literally hysterical, like the mouse, pushing the button, saying, I need to get this feeling. Now, this uh, quote up here, I forget what site it comes on. I'll put it below in the, in the uh, comments and everything. But it says, most alcoholics can't just use a little willpower, right? That was a big thing. I bought books on willpower. I have one over here somewhere, uh, somewhere over there. It's about willpower. And it talks about, hey, you could willpower yourself to do anything. What the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And these things are good for business and things like that for people who are well. But the alcoholic is not well. The alcoholic has his brain hijacked, just like that mouse we saw, right? His brain is literally hijacked. So to put positive thinking on a hijacked mind is a moot point. It's not going to work. And I want to bring another, um, another slide up here for you. These are really, really difficult to read. From this screen we need to get a bigger screen here um, oh yeah here it is okay cool uh, it's this one where it says uh, as a man thinketh in his heart so is he this is a Bible verse right it's something we learn in church which I think if you learn church and go to church and everything like that but you don't have your mind straight it could actually be a bad thing it could be a bad thing because of the fact that it leads to OCD, obsessive compulsive, things like that, guilt, a lot of these things, okay? And we look at this and we say, well, what does this mean? As a man thinketh, so is he. Does this mean I am my thoughts? Is that what it means? Right? A lot of the self-help stuff, the secret, law of attraction, all this stuff is going to tell you that you are what you think about all day. Right? You are what you think about. And we look at this. We say, am I my thoughts? Okay, well, you take a teenage kid. Obviously, you know what's on the brain of every teenage boy, right? One thing. It's, yeah, they like eating, but there's something a little more important than that. And it's girls, right? They like girls. Now, they're thinking about girls all day. If you're anything like I was as a teenager, you're thinking about that all day. The rest of the time, you think about how much you hate school. And then you think about, you know, how much... You like the girls. Now, am I my thoughts? Do I now turn into a girl because I'm thinking about them all day? Well, some would argue yes, but no, that actually didn't happen, right? So we look at that. We say, am I my thoughts? If I think about money all day, do I become money or do I become rich? Well, the law of attraction is going to say yes. Now, they say you also have to do some work, right? There's a caveat to it. It's like, well, you could think positive, but you also have to, like, do a bunch of work. Well, Freaking duh. I mean, really? But what they're saying here is that our thoughts are us. We become what we think about. Now, I don't think this is absolutely true because of the fact that I've thought of, thought of lots of things and they haven't become me. The mind is what the brain does. Okay, The mind is what's thinking, and that's what the brain does. The brain is a part of you, and the mind is the thinking, and the thinking is the thoughts. Isn't it interesting how we look at thoughts, and thoughts are always in a language? Now, that language was given to you. It wasn't something you came up with, right? So you're thinking in this language, and they're saying that if you think in this language and you think about money, boom, you are going to get rich, okay, with a little work. There's our disclaimer of with a little work. Now, a lot of people will say the same thing with alcohol, right? If you think about not drinking and you really focus on it, all you got to do, buddy, is put the bottle down. That's it. But the problem is, the problem is, is we are like, where'd he go? We are like uh, this dude here, this little rat, right? Remember our rat? We're like that. Our brain's been hijacked. So no matter what you tell it, even if I believe in the law of attraction and I will myself to do these things, my brain has been hijacked. And when your brain is hijacked, when your brain is controlled by something other than your conscious will, then you have no willpower left. Right? This is why people say surrender to alcohol. Say, hey, it beat me. It's much like if you were to take someone and put them in a prison camp. 
right? You take someone, you put them in a prison camp, and you say, okay, well, we're going to put you in a prison camp. After that time in a prison camp, nine out of 10 people will not be recognizable, right? If I was to go into one, no matter how much willpower I have, no matter how much positive thinking, no matter how many freaking rainbows and unicorns I believe in, at the end of 30 days, I don't care what you say, you're not going to recognize me. My brain is going to change. It's going to change and it's going to go after base desires. It's going to go after food. That's all I'm going to care about. It's going to go after survival. That's all I'm going to care about, right? And these things happen. That's why this stuff is so important because your brain's been hijacked, just like the guy in the, in the prison camp or whatever it is, right? Your brain is being hijacked by these certain things. And to come in and say, well, you know, let's fix this with a little kumbaya and a little good feeling, then there's going to be a lot of trouble here. And we're going to talk about that. Now, this reminds me of uh, the movie Back to the Future. If you've ever seen Back to the Future, uh, what he does is he talks about when they go back in the future and they say, you know, here we are in 1950 and we need to get to the 1980, right? And he says, well, you know, in order to get to the right 1980, uh, Marty says, well, why don't we just travel to the 50 or to the, to the 2012 or whatever it is from here? And Doc says, well, you can't do that because you see what happened is somewhere along here when Biff got the book, the time reality skewed. So if you're traveling from this point in time, you're gonna to go to the 2012 of this point in time. And he goes on to explain this. And this is really what's happening here because you're saying, well, you know, let's do positive thinking, right? Let's do positive thinking. But if you do the positive thinking from this alternate reality where your brain has been hijacked, nothing's going to work up here. Sure, it's gonna work great. But down here, you have been skewed, and these things are happening. And from this mindset, you can't get where you want to go because it's been hijacked. So let's talk about that. I have some sticky notes here that uh, I went through, uh, but they fell because I was organizing the camera here. But one of the things we have here is dual diagnosis. Okay, dual diagnosis and I'm not a doctor or anything, as it says on the disclaimer on this video, but dual diagnosis is when you have two different things. You have coexisting disorders. You have maybe alcohol and depression, or alcohol and OCD, or alcohol and whatever. Okay, You have some kind of addiction, but you also have something on top of it. Now, again, this stuff here added up is like you trying to will yourself out of an alternate universe. Right? It's you are in a world created by your addiction. And just like that rat, he doesn't care about cheese anymore. He doesn't care about anything anymore. All he cares about is the alcohol. You're a little bit different because you can think in words and thoughts and have memories and words and thoughts and organize these things together and categorize things. But you're a lot like the rat. And if you've ever, if you've ever been in school or ever had a friend Right, we have friends and uh, guys and girls will understand this, right? You hang out with your guy friends or your girlfriends or whatever, and uh, all of a sudden, one of your friends starts to date someone that no one really cares for. I mean, it's okay, but no one really cares for them. And the person isolates your friend from the group, right? And this person gets isolated, they start to get depressed, they start to feel certain things, they start to think certain things, and all along, they just go downhill, right? It's like gradually, they're going into this alternate universe. Their mind is being changed by these feelings and these thoughts about this new person. And over time, they get skewed, but they don't realize it's happening. They don't realize it till it's too late, and they're like, well, where are all my friends? Why do I feel depressed all the time? Why am I obsessed with this person? What's going on? And a lot of this stuff happens with alcohol, but it's a lot different. Right? It's a lot different because we have these things like dual diagnosis. We have these things like alcohol hysteria. We're trying to fix it from this mindset, and we're trying to feel better about this stuff. So the question is, what needs to happen for us to change? What needs to happen for us to get better? And this happens with anything. It could happen with depression, although uh, depression is a little different because you don't have the chemical dependency part. Um, you know, These things are, are very bad. So what we want to do is we want to look at this, and we want to say, Okay, let's take a look at the definitions here. Here's a definition, and I'll move over here so I can read it, right? Here's a definition for the word disease, okay? A lot of people say, is alcoholism a disease or is it a habit, okay? Now, let's take a look. A disease is defined as a disorder of the structure or function in a human, 
so the disorder the uh, yeah a disorder or of structure or function in a human so you got your structure you got your functioning as a human and a disease disorders that right it screws it all up and it says um, or animal or plant especially one that produces specific signs or symptoms that affects a specific location and is not simply a direct result of physical injury so is alcoholism a direct result of physical injury no I don't think so is it localized to one part well, maybe that's debatable you could say the brain or whatever okay but the fact of the matter is as we look at this and it has a lot of the things that do say disease now is it a disease by the textbook definition like cancer or like something like that no I don't believe it is but is it something that we're just like literally taking a hammer I just so happen to have a hammer here right and hammering our head over and over um, and we're just being silly and stupid and we could just quit at the drop of a hat. No, I don't think it's that either. Okay, so let's take a look at the other option. The other option people say, and this is one of the things that a lot of the people in the uh, self-help camp like to say, that the law of attraction folks that are like, okay, well, um, let's take a look. Is it a habit, right? So let's look at what a habit is. So disease, you know, you probably have some of the characteristics of a disease. How about a habit? A uh, settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that's hard to give up. Okay, like smoking. All right, we look at smoking. Uh, I like to smoke my pipe once in a while. Um, some people bite their nails. Some people, you know, do all kinds of habits. Now, is a habit the same as an addiction, right? Is a guy that's in the gutter who drinks himself into oblivion and doesn't care about anything, is that the same as just biting your nails? And can we overcome it with just willpower? Are you truly just so weak that you can't stop drinking? Well, I was. And as you can see, I read a lot of books. Let's see if we can show you the books here. Right? I read a lot of books on it, uh, a lot of different books on all these different things. Like uh, here's some here, uh, how God changes your brain, uh, the right questions, hooked, coach and awakener, and uh, all different things, right? Lots of different books up there. Um, and we have more. We have more coming, too. And we look at this and we say, okay, well, well, here's, you know, Marcus. And Marcus is, he's trying to figure this stuff out. And these people with stuff like the law of success and the law of attraction say, you know, what you need to do is you just need to focus on this. You need to think good thoughts and you need to get out of it. All right, so let, let's take a look at that again. Now, here I am, right here I am. I'm already down here. I'm already down here where I've tried to stop drinking numerous times, but I can't do it. Now, I know in my mind all of these things. I know how it works, right? I know the idea. I've, I've built a successful business in my terms. I mean, of course, there's some more successful than me. But uh, I built a successful business, and I did it all with this great thinking stuff. When I got depressed, I'd be like, okay, I need to think my way out of it or, or whatever it is, okay? But here I am, and I'm drinking, and I got these issues, and I wasn't like, the greatest positive thinker in the world, but I was pretty positive. A lot of people knew I was pretty positive. I was even pretty positive when I was drinking, right? So here we are, we're down here, and our brain has been skewed by alcohol, right? We're like in this alternate universe of alcohol hysteria, and we don't know how to get out. We're like that rat, right? That rat's like, boom, I need to push that button. That's all I care about now It's pushing that button. Okay, now what happens here is our brain has been hijacked. It's been hijacked several different ways. One, by thousands, if not millions, of repetitive input saying alcohol equals good. Alcohol equals good. Now, this comes in the way of TV. comes in the way of culture. It comes in the way of you drinking over and over to feel good. You needing it, craving it, everything like that. On top of it, you also have cravings. Okay? On top of this, you also have the shit. What is the shit? The shit is what your life has now become since you've been drinking, right? Remember those things we talked about? Legal, family, money, health. All these problems that we have that are exacerbated and made worse with drinking. Okay, so very bad. For me, it was like, okay, I had some money problems, but not too bad. Now that I'm drinking, I'm making very bad decisions. Now I'm very bad. Uh, business stuff not getting done, family stuff not getting done. All this stuff is piling up. So now I have the shit, which my brain says, well, remember those millions of times you drank and you felt better? Go drink and feel better. On top of this, we also have coexisting 
conditions, right? Like uh, perhaps it's ADD or OCD or depression, right? And things like that. So here we have this stuff. And a lot of the pop psychology, a lot of the, the feel-good stuff, the Tony Robbins, which has some great stuff, by the way. Law of Attraction, not so great in my opinion. Um, I think they could probably just leave out the Law of Attraction stuff and tell you to go work for what you want. Same kind of thing, right? Um, law of Attraction stuff. This stuff will tell you that our minds are programmed to do what feels good. Okay? We want to do what feels good and, and avoid what feels bad. That's the nutshell of a lot of positive thinking stuff, right? The mind is either going towards feeling good or away from feeling bad. But what about drinking, right? Have we not drank so many times and we know that it makes us feel bad over and over and over again? We know it's ruining our life. We know that we're screwing up our own life by our own hand every time we take a drink. And we look at this and we say, am I a weakling, right? And this was a struggle that I dealt with very bad. Right? I dealt with this struggle because I hated myself. And I said, I hate myself because I'm supposed to be able to pick myself up by the bootstraps, which a lot of people quote, but is actually impossible. That quote is impossible. You can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps because if you're pulling on your bootstraps, all you're doing is moving your legs around and you can't get anywhere. And we look at this and we have these sayings like this and we have these cute things and these uh, quotes and everything like that. But at the end of the day, is it really working? For me, it was not. And it got so bad that it brought me into this alternate skewed reality that was created by my alcohol that I couldn't see. I was like that guy who had dated someone. And I didn't see myself going downhill. I didn't see my personality changing or the guy in the concentration camp or whatever, right? He's sitting there and he's like, all I'm focused on is eating and, and surviving and things like that. And pretty soon at the end of the day, you don't even see, you don't even realize uh, that you've changed. Right? A lot like uh, there was an experiment done, the Sanford Prison Experiment. And they took all these people and they're like, we're going to pretend that these are the bad guys and the jail guys. And they were all just college people or something. And these are the good guys, the uh, guards. And they put them all in a prison to see what would happen. And it was all pretend. It was all make-believe. But over a series of time, the bad guys became really bad and started fighting with the good guys who became really bad and started beating the bad guys. And over time, they forgot that this was fake. Right? This is called the power of the situation. Alcohol or using or whatever has created a situation. And you can't see reality. So I don't care how much positive thinking you do. I don't care how much willpower you have. I don't care how many seminars you go to or courses you buy. The fact of the matter is, is you're buying it from here. You are trying to change a fucked up mind with a fucked up mind. It's not going to work, right? It's not going to work. So what is going to help us? What's going to change it? One, I believe the key is education, right? Learning this stuff right now. We are opening your, your mind saying every time you take a drink, you're taking it from this alternate universe. You need to get out of this universe. And you can't just, you know, kumbaya, sing, clap, 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 think your way out of it. You can't sit on a mountaintop and think your way out of it. You need to, one, make a plan to not drink no matter what. Because when you try to stop, all this stuff is going to come in. And when it doesn't come in, when you're having a good day, you're going to be like, well, you know, that's not that great. Boom, I need to go drink anyway. Or, hey, that was great. I'm going to go celebrate. Because your mind looks at this as a solution. So what we need to do is we need to break you out of alcoholic hysteria. And we do this. Um, there's a therapy model called NLP, which is good. Again, a little fluffy, a little surface level. Okay. But it talks about how our language creates things and how you can interrupt a pattern. Like, you know, you, like the whole idea of running into a movie theater, theater and yelling fire. Right? What happens is all these people are sitting there, they're watching a movie, they're comfortable, they got their buckets of popcorn and their giant sugary sodas, and they're sitting there enjoying the movie and someone yells fire, whether it's real or not, chaos ensues. Right? What he did is he broke a pattern. The pattern was people relaxed watching a movie having fun. He broke that pattern. And what we need to do is we need to break the pattern and yank you out of here and put you up on this reality again. And the way that we do it is we got to make a plan and we've got to start to change your brain, right? Like the rat, your brain is like, boom, 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 I need to get this alcohol. And we need to change that. We need to undo this stuff. 
we need to start undoing this. And we undo it by a, a process. And what we want to do is we want to look at it and say, well, does the pattern interrupt help? Well, the pattern interrupt would be like an intervention or something, which I don't know. I haven't read that much on those. But uh, in concept, it seems like an interesting thing. Um, however, the success rates of people who go to rehab after intervention is pretty low. The success rates of people who go to rehab anyway is pretty low. But what I think needs to happen here is a change in belief, a change in structure. And I'm not talking about structure and belief like, oh, I think the world is bad, now I think it's good. I'm talking about a fundamental change that says that you don't need alcohol anymore. A fundamental change that makes you believe that alcohol is putting you on this playing field. Something that says, hey, this is what we need to do. Someone to come alongside you and say, hey, buddy, let's take you through this. Let's help you understand what's going on. Education is the key to getting out of this. Education is the key to understanding. But remember, your education gives you options. Right? It gives me options. It says, well, now that I know a craving is normal, I don't need to give into it because you know, a craving creates another craving. It's like a, a book I read years ago. I think it was by P.T. Barnum. Um, he was talking about things, and he's like, you know, the funny thing about cigars is when you have a cigar, you want another cigar. But when you stop smoking cigars, you don't really want one. But if you have one, if you're like, man, you know, maybe I'd like one, then you start up the cycle again, and you want more and more and more and more. And what's happening here is the craving you don't have to give in to. You don't have to, but if you give in to it, it's going to create more craving. This is why we get in trouble, right? We say, well, you know, maybe, maybe I'll just have one or whatever, and it starts the cycle up again. So what we need to do is we need to start to consciously, consciously reprogram your mind, not by positive thinking, not by just thinking in general, but we need to program the belief structure, right? We need to train you to believe that alcohol is bad and alcohol is causing your problems, plain and simple, because right now you're probably thinking, well, you know, I don't want to give up alcohol for the rest of my life. I mean, you know, some of it I like, some of it's kind of cool, whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is you think that right now because of programming. You have been programmed to think that. And you've been programmed to think it, and what we need to do is we need to change this belief. We need to change this belief, and we need to get you to understand how this works, because the only way to beat this is to understand it. And the knowledge that we're showing you the information i'm giving you is going to give you options you're going to understand hey cravings are at play um, involuntary recall and numerous amounts of reconditioning and reprogramming have happened every time i drink those are going to give you options that's going to help you understand but what you do is going to keep you sober you can't outthink a thinking problem why because you're down here you need a new way of thinking. You need a new program, and you need a new belief system. A belief system that, you know, says, hey, these things can happen. Because when I was drinking, I thought it was a weakness. I thought, okay, it must be a willpower thing. It must be something. I must be weak. I must need more self-help, more law of attraction books, more stuff, right? More stuff. But no matter how much stuff I got, I don't know where to put this, no matter how much stuff I got, nothing worked. So am I weak? Do I just need more positive thinking? Or is there something else at play here? Is there something else at play? And I think there's something else at play. And right now you might be feeling like you are in that spiral and the spiral you can't get out of. And maybe for a couple of days or a week or whatever, you feel okay, but you always go back like a moth to the flame. Right? You always go back like that rat. You know, you take him away, you give him some cheese, he might nibble on it for a while, but as soon as he sees that button, boom, he's going to push it again because his mind says, that is the solution for your life. Things are bad, that's the solution. Things are good, that's the solution. You want to feel good, that's the solution. Over and over and over and over again. And the problem here is with alcohol and many drugs, they're highly addictive. And they create this feeling and they create this thought and they warp your thought pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to change your thought pattern. And we're going to start to open up your mind as we are right now in this video to understand how this goes. And we look at this and we say, I'm not my thoughts. I'm not my cravings. I'm not my addiction. I'm something more than that. I am not the sum of the things that were done to me, the things I've done, the things I think about, or anything like this. These are all just circumstance. We are where we are, and we have to accept that. Here I am, and I need help. Accept that. Start there. 
and then we can move forward. Accept that and then we can start to reprogram your mind and start to understand how this works and combat it. Not by just some positive thinking or whatever it is, right? We'll put those quotes up again to talk about how they work. Um, and if you guys can still hear me okay, put something in the box and let me know. Uh, there we go. I think it's this one. Right, so some of the things that uh, were brought up here is, do you think you're a real alcoholic or just a problem? So he was saying mind over matter, right? The fact of the matter is, is no matter what, I just keep going back. So is it just mind over matter? Do I just think my way out of it? No, because if I think my way out of it, I'm thinking from this set of beliefs. I'm thinking from this point in my life. Uh, if you can believe, you can achieve. Well, I believed I could get sober. I was like, hell yeah, I could beat this. Made a million bucks on the internet. I ought to be able to kick some stupid little bottle, but I couldn't. Another one was, in order to succeed, we must first believe that we can. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know if I believe I could stay sober the rest of my life, but I know I can stay sober today. I know I cannot drink today, right? So I can start there. Um, another one is believe in yourself and have faith in your abilities. Well, back here, I had no faith in any abilities. I thought I was a worthless steaming pile of that, right? <laughs> Crap. And um, I hated myself. And we look at this, and there's people who say, believe you can, and you're halfway there. Well, believe I believed I can. Maybe I'll get halfway here, but that doesn't take me out of the pit. That doesn't take me out of where I need to be. Uh, control your actions by uh, using thoughts, right? Can you control your actions by thoughts? Well, somewhat, but sometimes the thoughts just take over. So I want to give you a piece that you can take with you, and that piece is to remember that a thought is just something that happens, right? If you're in a situation and people start to say, well, you know, the key to life is X. You're going to start to think about X all the time, right? Even if it's like an alternate universe where people think about different stuff. But we look at this, and thoughts are things that just happen. They're chemical impulses that are in our brain. That's it. Chemical impulse in our brain saying, I need to drink. I need to not drink. I need to make money. I need to this. I need that girl. I need that guy. I need whatever, right? All they are is things that happen. Now, if you watch TV and you start to watch funny things, you're probably going to start to have pretty funny thoughts. Why? Because these things come up, your brain remembers them, and it looks for patterns. The way that your brain works is it's looking for patterns over and over and over again. It is the biggest pattern recognizing machine in the world. And it creates patterns based on your experience, right? I see someone, they have a weird looking face, and my brain goes, that reminds me of this guy. I need to start feeling this way because that's bad. Okay, and it doesn't even think in language, right? This is where a lot of this stuff goes wrong. They think that language is key. Language isn't key. Language is like the software that makes this stuff work. But we have hardware problems, right? And we need to look at this. We need to say, okay, we got problems with things a lot deeper than just the software. And we look at this and we say, well, you know, uh, these patterns are being recognized. I recognize this as a pattern that says I need to drink. I recognize this as a pattern. And thoughts are created that way, right? Uh, you've met those people that everything's bad and they say, well, you know, oh, woe is me. Everything's bad. And they go throughout their day and a normal person can go throughout their day and live perfectly fine. But this person is recognizing patterns that say everything is bad. Everything is against me. Okay. And it goes through life and it goes, Doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah, that light turned red and I'm late. The world's against me. I got a bad diagnosis at the doctor. The world's against me. I didn't make the money I was supposed to or get the promotion. The world's against me. And they're looking for patterns to look at these things. And they're looking for patterns to prove themselves right. Well, I don't want to be right. I want to be sober and I want to live well. So I'm going to give up on the patterns and I'm going to realize that they are just patterns. It's all they are, right? Thoughts come and go. They don't make us a certain person or a certain thing. If I think about something all the time, it just means it's something that's coming up and I choose to pick it up and look at it. It's like all these thoughts are going through and it's like a river and you choose what thoughts you are going to dwell on, right? You pick up, you choose what thoughts you're going to dwell on. Sometimes it's kind of automatic because you programmed yourself to be that way. Sometimes um, it just happens, right? A lot of people say, well, you can't affect how I feel. Yeah, I can, right? If I went up and I started a fight with you, I'm going to make you feel anxious. I'm going to make you feel scared. Well, maybe not scared. I'm only five feet tall, but you might get a little scared, right? And we look at that and we're like, okay, well, these things can be programmed. These things can be looked at, right? And we, we take a look at that and we say, well, what changes it? Well, belief changes it. A core belief in who you are, 
what you are, what you think, and things like that. So the belief says, like if I was really strong, I'd say, well, the belief says I could kick your butt, right? Like an ant comes up to me, and I, I think I can take an ant, maybe, I don't know, if I, if I learned how to box really good, right? And the ant comes up to me, I'm like, well, hey, I'm not threatened by the ant, squish. Uh, not that you should kill ants, it's just a explanation, right? So we look at that, and the belief changes it. So what we want to do is we want to start to interrupt the pattern here. We want to take you out of this part. Now, this part takes a while to get out of. Uh, my brain didn't start getting back to normal till about 90 days. Um, 90 days sober, things started to change. It wasn't drastic. It was really slow. I gave myself a lot of time. I didn't work a lot. I was just like, okay, I need to get sober because I'm going to die. Um, luckily, the circumstance allowed me to not work and things like that. Uh, around the one-year mark, um, things started to get better as well. So the key here is getting out of this situation and making a pact to say I'm not going to drink no matter what. No matter what happens, I'm not going to drink because it's going to make it worse, right? And you do this with your action. You say that's what I'm going to do. You make it hard for yourself to get it. You avoid the things, um, and you start to fight yourself on this. Not physically fight yourself, right? No, I'm kicking my ass, do you mind? We don't want to do that. Uh, after about a year, um, what I started doing after I got out of uh, recovery or rehab or whatever you call it, um, is I started listening to things every day and I started learning new ways of thinking. I started learning new belief systems, right? And instead of the old stuff that wasn't working for me anymore, I started to get new stuff and it helped a lot. And what this channel about is about is helping you understand, giving you options, right? Some of those videos out there give you options that just don't work, right? I'm not gonna believe in unicorn fuzzy thoughts and everything when I caused all this crap with my drinking, right? It's not gonna help. It's like, I don't care how positive you are. I have royally fucked up my life and I need some help, right? So we look at that and we say, well, what are the other options, right? Maybe that'll work for some people. I hope it does. I'd rather ride a freaking unicorn and think happy thoughts and get rich by no work or whatever uh, than I would doing the work. But, you know, sometimes you got to do the work. And I wouldn't change my situation for anything because this, the experience that I went through to learn this stuff has fundamentally changed who I am as a person, what I believe as a person, and how I react and, and get along in the world as a person. It changed everything. And what I started doing is listening to things, right? There's a list on Tuxedo sober.com slash listen of all the things that I listen to we go through book reviews uh, we talk about some of the tapes I have some downloads for you um, some links for you and stuff like that and we go through and learn about this now if you are in that situation where you need help and you can't get out of here and no matter what I say or or what you do uh, you just keep going back what I would say is go get some help over at talksober.com slash help uh, you can learn about different uh, options that are available for you. Check it out. Right, get the help you need. I remember thinking that 30 days in rehab was going to kill me. Uh, it actually didn't. It was scary as hell, and I was anxious the entire 30 days. But it forced me to not drink for 30 days because I couldn't do it on my own. It was like, okay, you can't get out of here. And at the end of rehab, I felt kind of good, and they were like, congratulations, you didn't drink for 30 days in a place where you can't have alcohol. Bravo. Right. Uh, sometimes that's what we need. Sometimes we need a support system to be there so that every day we come home and they smell it on our breath. They're like, OK, buddy, we need to get you help. Um, go to TalkSober.com slash help and learn uh, that list of things that you can check out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to look at this because my guess is, is you're probably like me and you're stuck. Maybe you got dual diagnosis. Maybe you're struggling with a lot of these things. And maybe you need someone to come along and say, hey, buddy, I've been there before. I've done it. Here's what you need to do. Right. Um, and maybe the fuzzy pop psychology stuff ain't working for you. Maybe self-help isn't working because this self isn't able to help itself, right? This mind isn't able to think good things because it's been clouded and all I can think about is pushing that button. So what we want to do first and foremost is stop pushing that button and you could do that over at TalkSober.com slash help or TalkSober.com slash rehab, uh, whichever one, and we'll help you with it. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I have a lot of fun talking to you guys every week about this stuff on Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, we're going to start adding some more sessions. Put your comments in the box below. Tell me how you're doing. I want to learn what you're struggling with. Uh, we're going to start a session where we go through um, uh, in the last couple months I've gotten like 600 emails on my website about people struggling and we're gonna start go through those things and talk about real-world stuff that helps real-world people not that pie-in-the-sky stuff that makes some guru rich and the rest of us struggle right I'm not here to get rich I'm here to help you and uh, I got my other business for making money 
But uh, hopefully you like this. Subscribe to my channel. Check us out at 11 o'clock on Fridays. Remember, you don't have to drink today. And you don't have to drink because this knowledge is giving you options. Take something. Use it. And I'll see you next week. Thanks again. Marcus here from Talk Sober. If you need help, go to TalkSober.com slash help. See you next week. Something like that. I think I might have had another quote. Oh, yeah, here's our last quote. We'll end on this quote, and I think I could put this up here. All right, we'll end on this quote, and I'll read it for you before we go. And the quote says, We must abandon completely the notion of blaming the past for any kind of situation that we're in and reverse our thinking and see that the past always flows back from the present, that now is the creative point of life. So you see, it's like the idea of forgiving somebody you can change the meaning of the past by doing that. Also, watch the flow of music. The melody, as it is expressed, is changed by notes that come later, just as the meaning of a sentence. You wait till later to find out what the sentence means. The present is always changing the past. Remember that we live, and all of our experience is going backwards and creating the past, and you could change the past by changing now. Thanks again. I'm Marcus, and I'll see you next week here on Talk Sober dot com.